So what we have here is a large panel painting of a saint by Bartolomeo Viverini, an artist who worked in Venice in the second half of the 15th century and on into the 16th. It's a fairly large and impressive object, but it's a painting about which we had almost no information when the cataloging process began. This is not so surprising. Um, it could be said about Viverini that there are few Renaissance artists who made so many paintings about which so little is written. Viverini is one of art history's forgotten men. He exists somewhat in the shadow of his, of his more famous contemporaries, Giovanni Bellini, and he's just not been all that well studied. Nonetheless, as I began doing the research on it, I discovered that the saint looks a lot like the saints that Viverini was painting in the early 1470s at what might be considered the high point of his career. And I think we can also identify this panel as being of Saint Mark, an evangelist shown with a book with that beard and these colors robes. That matches up to Viverini's other depictions of Saint Mark. I also discovered as a carried out the research, another picture by Viverini of St. Mark in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. It has been argued that the Met picture is a fragment of a large altarpiece that was once in the church of Santi Giovanni e Paolo in Venice. Three panels of that altarpiece remain there. Much of the rest has been lost, scattered over time. It was cut apart around 1815 or so. And part of the argument for the Met St. Mark being from that altarpiece is that a scholar, Federico Zeri, realized that the punch pattern, these um, stencils that define the halo stamped into the gold uh, behind the saint, the punch pattern of the Met picture was the same or very similar to the punch pattern, the halos of the remaining panels in Santi Giovanni e Paolo. That was interesting partly because the punch pattern of this painting also matches that of the Met and consequently of the pictures in Santi Giovanni e Paolo. And so I began to wonder whether this, rather than the half-length Met fragment, might be from that altarpiece. And understanding more about its condition and structure might help us do that work of reconstructing its original place. This painting was examined at BACC in the early 1980s. Um, it was looked at under the microscope and also an X-ray radiograph was taken. So we found that the uh, panel itself has been backed with what we call a cradle. And a cradle is a system of wooden battens that help to reinforce the back of a panel that has had damage over time. And most of this gold has been completely repainted. Um, there's lots of damage to the paint in the robe of the figure. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that the panel itself, um, over time, is pretty unstable and has a tendency to move. But there are some areas of the painting that are very well preserved, including this foot down here. And we did see, in, you can see in the x-ray, that the, the tall vertical battens have been sawed down the length of them to try to help relieve some of that pressure that the cradle is putting onto the panel. So having understood that this thing has been messed with before, uh, I began to see how, while it doesn't today look so much like the remaining panels in Santi Giovanni e Paolo, it could possibly have been closer to those in the past. And so even looking at the surface of the picture, we began to notice a few oddities. You can see in certain lighting conditions that the crack allure, the crack pattern of the paint and of the gilding is is uneven, it doesn't match up. There's some very flat areas, and then there's an area here where there's actually a curve. An X-ray radiograph can show us the whole structure of the painting to see where there's original paint, where there's fill, where there's damage, and where um, we're trying to see an edge of a paint layer. Here, you can see that original paint, that crack allure. You see how wonderfully consistent that is with the cracks going horizontal. Now, go up here and look at the face. We're seeing a very, very different story. And you're seeing the crack allure here, the horizontal cracks of the original paint. But then there's an area a here that there are no cracks. So you have original paint here yeah. and here, and there's an island of it here, and an island of original paint here. But all of this throughout the eyes, the nose, half of his ear, this part of the halo, and all of this, this side of his face is a fill material. But the important thing from the point of view of identifying this as a fragment of the old altarpiece from 1473 at Santi Giovanni Paolo is the limits of the original gold. Now remember the surviving fragments of that polyptych have not the arch top this painting has, 
but this sort of trilobe shape. And one of the interesting things that we see, and it's perhaps a little bit hard to read in the x-ray, but we do see this indistinct outline of what seems to be the original margins of the painted surface. The rest of it would have been left unpainted because it was hidden by framing members of the polyptych. So not only do the size, um, the scale of the figure match, but even the original pattern of the gilding, as well as the punch mark, which is part of the way we got down this road, um, this shape seems to confirm that this could well be the missing fragment of that great polyptic, which really would have been one of Viverini's two or three most important projects from the height of his career.